Looking for things to remember? Not for humdrum memory exercise, but incredible boosts that will make all of life much more exciting? Well, in this video, I'll give you three suggestions based on the hierarchy of skills most people benefit from in everyday life and take things up a notch. Hey there, this is Anthony Metivier from MagneticMerryMethod.com, where I help mature learners like you take mental adventures that help you learn and remember more than you ever imagined possible. If you're new here, start now by getting subscribed, clicking the bell icon so you don't miss new free memory training and our epic live streams. And hit that thumbs up for memory, and let's go. Now, as Lynn Kelly points out in MemoryCraft, your entry point into memory techniques depends a lot upon where you want to go. But generally, there are four categories of memory skill everyone should consider mastering. And it seems to me this is the order that makes the most sense. Names, vocabulary, phrases, and numbers. The memory palace and all the techniques of association with them will take care of these categories. All you have to do is learn them and practice them. The best part is that a lot of research shows just by practicing them, healthy changes occur in the brain. Many of those changes are very likely proactive in preparing your brain to fight against diseases like dementias and Alzheimer's. So it only makes sense to get started now. And the benefits of being able to memorize names, vocabulary, phrases, and numbers are huge in everyday life. But what if you've already got these skills covered? What can you do for memory exercise that makes more of your mind palace or memory palace network? Well, the first exercise I would suggest is the exercise of adding historical dates to names and doing it in a way that allows you to remember historical periods. So for example, let's say you worked on the early modern period in Europe, generally considered to be 1453 to 1789. You could create a memory palace with 11 magnetic stations and on each associate numbers with a name that tells you the period and its dates. So for the age of discovery, I think of the magician Di Vernon. You might think of Princess Diana or Matt Dillahunty. All that matters is that something about the name links with the DI of discovery to trigger off that phrase. Then using the major system, your magnetic PAO or something like the Dominic system, you can pile on the numbers for the dates of the first period. So 1400 to 1770 can be on the same magnetic station. And my images for these numbers would be the Michelin tire man throwing himself at Thomas Zaz on Diver in his left hand while Tucker Max tosses a pile of history books at my Aunt Cassie on the right. Now generally using the hands of a magnetic bridging figure like this is a useful way to encode historical dates. On your next station, you might have the Polish Golden Age, in which case I would think of Chris Poland of the heavy metal band Megadeth. And this time we have 1507 to 1572, so I might have a Polish sausage with a tail on the tuning head of his guitar involved in encoding the start date and his picking hand involved in the end date with a soup can messing up the song. Something powerful happens here as well, because in another memory palace from another time, I encoded that Petrus Ramus died in 1572. He was an interesting figure in the history of education with some strange things to say about memory, and now a mental cross-index occurs between the end of this age and his passing. The more dates you encode like this, the more history comes alive in your mind. So how about you? If you're looking for things to remember, why not continue with something like the Golden Age of Piracy, the Elizabethan era, the Protestant Reformation, and so on? Or if these Europe-based ages hold no interest to you, there are many ages to consider. As an alternative, you could memorize a list of presidents and then add their birth dates and death dates where relevant using your preferred number system and their hands. No matter what you choose, this is a powerful memory exercise and well worth pursuing. So that's names and numbers. When it comes to vocabulary, you could memorize poetic terms. For example, imagine a memory palace loaded up with anapest, assonance, caesura, and so forth. After you've memorized the list, you can go back and add examples in the form of phrases that exemplify the principle. So an anapest is a metrical foot that consists of two unstressed syllables followed by a stressed syllable. Weird, right? Well, not when you think of it like this. Metrical patterns in poetry are called feet, and an anapest is a type of foot. So words such as understand and contradict are examples of anapest. Each has three syllables, and in each accent, or in each word, the accent falls on the final syllable. And it's best used within anapestic tetrameter, in which each line has four anapests. So Dr. Zeus used this structure a lot in his da-da-dum, da-da-dum rhythms that led to great lines like these in Horton Hears a Who. On the 15th of May, in the jungle of Newell, in the heat of the day, in the cool of the pool, he was splashing, enjoying the jungle's great joys when Horton the elephant heard a small noise. Anyhow, this is just an example of something you could do. An equivalent would be memorizing grammar rules and then memorizing examples that exemplify the rule. I have a video all about memorizing grammar rules, so please check that out for more if you like. In either case, you'll get a lot of fun memory challenge out of this approach to your memory palace training exercises. Now, finally, you can practice taking things up a notch 
by numbering all the stations in your memory palaces. For example, when I use this technique, Magnetic Station 1 always has the sad tragedy mask. This image refers to the mask worn by William Shatner in his performance of Oedipus Rex. I arrive at this image because 0 and 1 or 0 1 for the first station draw upon the major system. This system tells us that 0 is associated with an S, soft C, or Z, and 1 is associated with a D or T. From there, I've chosen the word sad, zero, one, and extrapolated that onto the tragedy mask concept and sought out a specific example from there. By the time I get to 99, nine being represented by a B or P, I've got two nines, hence P and P, and I turn that word into Pope. And I think of the iconic Pope figure from the heavy metal band Ghost. There's a lot of heavy metal in my mnemonics, but don't worry, Patty Loveless and a fist fight with Dolly Parton would work just as well for 99 if you're into country or Pavarotti singing Puccini if classical is your thing. And by the time you've memorized all these figures, you can then take your numbered memory palace and work on memorizing a numbered text, like many scriptures happen to be. I have more resources on memorizing scripture for you in the description below, and I'm sure you'll have a blast walking around with mountains of text available at a moment's notice from within your mind. I sure do. So there you have it. Three powerful things to remember that provide incredible and advanced memory exercise. If you're not at that level yet, no worries. You know what you can look forward to. And if you need help, get my free memory improvement kit at magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash YT. Until next time, my memory friends, hit that thumbs up if you haven't already. Keep the conversation down below and keep yourself magnetic.